Hi everybody and welcome back to video number seven in chapter 16. When we left off we were looking at a single period example and here we're going to assume that on January 1, 2025 Hinge's company had cash and common stock of $50,000. At that date the company had no other asset, liability, or equity balance. On January 2nd Hinge's purchases for cash $50,000 of debt securities classified as available for sale. On June 30, Hinges sold part of the available for sale security debt portfolio, realizing a gain as shown in the following illustration. The fair value of the securities that we sold, $22,000. The cost of the securities sold was $20,000. So they realized a gain on of two thousand dollars. So how do we compute the unrealized gain? Well, Hinges did not purchase or sell any other securities during 2025. It received three thousand dollars in interest during the year. At December 31, 2025, the remaining portfolio was shown. The fair value of the portfolio was $34,000 less the cost of the portfolio, which was $30,000, leaving us with an unrealized gain of $4,000. So, how does that income statement look? Here we have interest revenue of $3,000. We have realized gains on investment securities of $2,000 and that results in a net income of $5,000. Okay, now as we look at the uh, statement of comprehensive income here, uh, the net income includes the realized gain of $2,000, total of $5,000, and we have other comprehensive income unrealized holding gain of 4000 So our comprehensive income is $9,000. In the stockholder's equity section, common stock, $50,000. Retained earnings, the $5,000 of net income. And the other accumulated comprehensive income, $4,000. So in total, $59,000. In the comparative balance sheet between the beginning of 2025 and the end of 2025, we had stockholders' equity of $50,000, we had assets of $50,000, and common stock of $50,000. So then at the end of the year, we had $25,000 in cash and $59,000 in total assets, $50,000 in common stock, $5,000 in retained earnings, and in red, $4,000 of accumulated other comprehensive income. Total stockholders' equity, $59,000. Okay, so what do we do with a multi-period example? When a company sells securities during the year, double counting of realized gains or losses in comprehensive income can occur. This double counting results when a company reports unrealized gains or losses in other comprehensive income in a prior period and then reports these gains or losses as part of net income in the current period. To ensure that the gains and losses are not counted twice when a sale occurs, a reclassification adjustment is necessary. And so, if we show, we assume open company as the following two available for sale debt securities in its portfolio at the end of 2025, its first year of operations. So it had these bonds and 
the fair values of those bonds and the unrealized holding gains or losses. In this case, a holding gain. And so we make a fair value of adjustment, a debit to $40,000. So we debit fair value adjustment, credit unrealized holding gain or loss equity for $40,000. Now, if open company reports net income in 2025 of 350,000, it presents a statement of comprehensive income as shown. Here we have net income, 350,000, but we also had the other $40,000 of other comprehensive income unrealized holding gain. Total of $390,000 of comprehensive income. Now, at December 31, 2025, Open Company reports on its balance sheet debt investments of $240,000. That re represents the cost of $200,000 plus the fair value adjustment of $40,000. And accumulated other comprehensive income in stockholders' equity of $40,000. The entry to transfer the unrealized holding gain equity to accumulated other comprehensive income is as follows. On December 31st, 2025, we debit unrealized holding gain or loss equity for $40,000 and credit accumulated other comprehensive income for $40,000. All right. On August 10th, 2026, Open Company sells its Lehman Incorporated bonds for $105,000 and realizes a gain on the sale of $25,000. That's the difference between $105,000 and $80,000. The journal entry to record this transaction is as follows. On August 10th, we're going to debit cash for the sale of $105,000 and credit debt investments for $80,000 and credit gain on the sale of investments for $25,000. So at the end of 2026, the fair value of Woods Company's bonds increased an additional $20,000 from $135,000 to $155,000. This illustration shows the computation of the change in the fair value adjustment account based on only the Woods Company investment as the Lehman bonds have been sold. So Woods, here's our cost, here's our fair value, the unrealized holding gain, and then the previous fair value adjustment balance, the $40,000 loss. So our fair value adjustment needs to be a credit of $5,000. So the entry to record that is going to be on December 31st, 2026, a debit to unrealized holding gain or loss dash equity and a credit to fair value adjustment for $5,000. And you can see the T account here for the balance going to $35,000. And you'll recall that that $35,000 was here. Okay. Now, if Open Company reports net income of $720,000 in 2026, including the realized sale of the Lehman bonds, its statement of comprehensive income is presented as shown. And here it is. We have net income, $720,000.
including that $25,000 realized gain on the layman bonds, and other comprehensive income, unrealized holding loss of $5,000. So our comprehensive income is $715,000. All right. At December 31, 2026, the Open Company reports on its balance sheet debt investments of $155,000. Again, that's the cost of $120,000 plus that fair value adjustment of $35,000. And accumulated other comprehensive income in stockholders' equity of $35,000, representing the $40,000 here, less the 5000 The entry to transfer the unrealized holding loss, dash equity, to accumulated other comprehensive income is as follows. At December 31, 2026, we'll have a closing entry and we'll debit accumulated other comprehensive income of $5,000 and credit unrealized holding gain or loss dash equity of $5,000. Okay. A note disclosure of reclassification adjustments um, is important. So the FASB prefers to show reclassification amount and accumulated other comprehensive income in the notes to financial statements. So here's an example of these notes. We had our beginning balance on January 1, 2026. We had the current period, other comprehensive income, the difference between $155,000 and $135,000, which is $20,000. And the amount reclassified from accumulated other comprehensive income, which was the $25,000, and that represents an unrealized holding loss. So the ending balance, therefore, is going to be $35,000 at the end of 2026. And this note here, the $20,000 measures the change in fair value, the unrealized gain on Woods bonds from December 31, 2025 to December 31, 2026, which we had just gone through in illustration 16.26 and 16.27. Okay, so accounting for transfers of debt, the type of transfer. Here, we're transferring from trading to available for sale. The security is transferred at fair value at the date of transfer, which is the new cost basis of the security. And then the impact on stockholders' equity, the unrealized gain or loss at the date of transfer increases or decreases stockholders' equity, and the impact on net income, the re unrealized gain or loss on the date of transfer is recognized in income. Now, if we transfer from an available for sale to trading, then the security is transferred exactly the same as we did with available for sale. And the unrealized gain or loss is uh, similar to what we did with the available for sale. And the impact on the transfer of net income is similar to what we did on the available for sale. Then, if it's a transfer from held to maturity to available for sale, the security is transferred at fair value at the date of transfer. And the separate component of stockholders' equity is increased or decreased by the unrealized gain or loss at the date of transfer. And there's no impact on net income. That looks like a good place to end this video, and when we return, we'll finish this slide and proceed on. Until that time, bye for now.